I'm curious, before the children leave, before the children leave, those who this is your very first time to be here at Oakley Community Church, would you raise your hands, please, so I can see? It's one, two, three, four. Is that it? Four? Thank you, boys and girls. You can leave now. Now, whoever tells Pastor John there were four people here for the very first time in your congregation. Now, you four don't leave too quickly. Let the congregation get a chance to meet you, get acquainted with you. Uh, I must say that since the last time that I was here, uh, some of the faces that I remember are here today, like Jim and Harriet. And uh, I'm going to call him this afternoon. I hope some of the rest of you will as well. Because he was supposed to be the chairman, and he usually is, and we enjoy the fellowship with him. And I, I have a praise. My wife, Narita, just raise your hand, honey. She fell on January the 13th and broke her ankle. And so <clears throat> from then until now, even though Pastor John has wanted me to come and fill the pulpit, he asked me at least once during that time, and I said, no, Narita isn't strong enough, and so I'll, I, because I'm her primary caregiver, those of you who are primary caregivers, you understand what I just said. Now, this is my wife. We've been married for 64 years, happily married. That's not too bad, right? Yeah. <laughs> And if you don't believe that, you ask her. <laughs> and she'll fill you in on the details. But uh, I'm glad to be able to be among you. Now, I want to give a commercial. Robert Slosser is from our church. And this will be his first time to be in your <coughs> congregation next Sunday. You pray for him and give him a warm welcome, okay? Sure. How many of you are not going to? May I see your hands? <laughs> <laughs> Shame on me. That was nice, wasn't it? But you see, I recommended Robert to come. Pastor John wanted me to come both Sundays, and we're not available next Sunday. And so I suggested this man, and he will feed you well from the Word of God. Amen. I'm glad to be here already. Are you? Amen. And I told my wife on the way over, I said, we're either going to have a more than, than normal crowd or a less than normal crowd. And as I look around, I would say this is more than a normal crowd, wouldn't you? On a holiday weekend? Amen? Are you glad to be a Christian? Amen. 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 Are you glad to be a Christian? Amen. Now, that's more likely. Okay, take your Bibles and turn with me to the Gospel of St. Luke. The Gospel of St. Luke. In just a moment... When I have you read, when I read the scripture, and I'll read it myself, and you just follow along in your Bible. Luke chapter 4, verses 16 uh, through 23. I want to, though, by way of introduction to this message, explain to you that Jesus came to heal broken spirits or broken hearts. To heal the broken heart. Now... If you've been a Christian any time at all, you know what has already been said today, that we have difficulties along the way. We have trials, we have sorrows, we have heartaches. Just because you're a Christian, that doesn't mean you're immune from difficulties. Amen? Amen. In fact, sometimes you have more difficulties after you become a follower of Christ than when you did before. Amen. Amen. And Jesus understands us, I think, better than we give Him credit for. I'd like to say that again. Jesus, un see, Jesus understands me. I don't always understand me. My wife doesn't always understand me. But Jesus understands me. And what He does for me, He does for you. Right? Amen. So this message today comes from His announcement. But before we have the reading of the scripture, I want to explain to you that when you become a follower of Christ, that doesn't mean that things are necessarily always going to go well for you. You may even have sorrows that you didn't plan to have. You may even have difficulties that you didn't think would come to you. 
And sometimes they overwhelm us. And in the midst of this, our spirit is broken. We have, as a believer, I'm talking about the believers. I'm not talking about the unbelievers. I'm talking about believers. Our spirit is broken. And today, we want to see what Jesus has to say about that condition. Will you stand now, please, with me for the reading of God's Word? Luke chapter 4, Luke chapter 4, and I'll begin reading at verse 16. And he, meaning Jesus, came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister, and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were on the, in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. Thank you. You may be seated. So Jesus, one of the things that he came to do, he came to heal the broken spirit and the broken hearted. Now, lest you think that this is interesting or doesn't happen to believers, I want to tell you what I think. Moses had a broken spirit. <coughs> Moses. You say, Moses? Yes. Let me tell you the story. See, this was long before God called him to lead the, his people out of captivity. And when he was in Pharaoh, when he was being raised by uh, Pharaoh and, and his and one day he saw two of his fellow uh, Israelites arguing. And he went out and he tried to get them to be at peace. But they said, well, who called you to be a peacemaker? Are you going to kill one of us like you killed the Egyptian yesterday? And the Bible says Moses fled. And he was in the wilderness for 40 years. Now, if you don't believe the sto story, read your Bible. Okay? It's in the Bible. You say, where is it? Find it. If I told you everything, you know, there wouldn't be any... You, you have to go into the Word of God and search it out for yourself. I'll tell you this. It's in the Old Testament. Okay? I'll give you... So don't look in the New Testament. Go start in the book of Genesis and you'll find it. The story of Moses. Now, I believe... doesn't say he had a broken spirit or broken heart. But I believe he did. Why? Because he fled. He fled. He took off running, we could say, for his very life. Okay? So now that you're at least listening to what I want to share with you today, let me describe for you what I believe a broken heart or broken spirit is. Sometimes we call this a nervous breakdown. Now, you've heard of people having nervous breakdowns, haven't you? Okay? I think that's another terminology for a broken heart or a broken spirit. Something within us just can't handle what life has been given to us. And so something happens inside us and our heart or our spirit is broken. In that state of mind, we, now we're a believer. I'm not talking to unbelievers, okay? This Word of God is to those of us who are the followers of Christ. Are you with me? Yep. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we have these strange thoughts, like somebody's trying to kill us. That may be an indication of a broken spirit. Not always, but it may be. Sometimes we get very inverted. In other words, all we do is we think within instead of out. We can't handle life. We just, we don't look forward to getting up. And when we've got up, we don't look forward to going back to sleep. You say, well, what do we do? Well, first of all, let me explain to us that if we as a believer, as a follower of Christ, have a broken spirit, there is one who is the healer for that. And his name is Jesus. Amen. 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 
Now, there's nothing wrong with having a broken spirit unless we don't bring it to the, to the one who can be the healer of it. Now, let me talk to those of us who may not have broken spirits or broken hearts. And let me encourage us to be a bit more compassionate and redemptive. The next time that you're around somebody that says, oh, somebody's trying to kill me, don't say, oh, you're out of your mind. Don't, don't, don't use those kind of terminologies. Don't say that. Try to say, oh, is that what you're thinking? In other words, try to carry on a conversation with them. Try to help them to know that you are concerned about the situation that they're in. Amen? Amen. Be redemptive rather than judgmental. You say, what's the difference? The redemptive person is a person who cares. And who lets the other person on the other end know that he or she cares. Now, let me interrupt myself a bit and let me talk about funerals. Can I talk about funerals? When you go to see the grieving family, don't stay for an hour and a half. Amen. They're grieving. Be short. If there's any time to use shortness, it's when the other person is grieving. I want to give you a story about this lady right here. Her name is Narita. She was in Meadow Lodge. Now, you guys know where Meadow Lodge is, don't you? Okay, maybe some of you have been, been there. She was there as a patient. She had had a knee replacement. And one of the people from our congregation came in who was trying to be, uh, I don't know the right word to say, I'm going to say helpful, okay? I'm going to give this person the benefit of the doubt. And they stayed for over an hour. They stayed, and they stayed, and they stayed, and they stayed. My wife was sick. Now when people are sick, they don't need your life history. Amen. I mean, th that's not the place to tell them every story that you think of that you want to catch up for them. Stay five minutes and say, I'll be praying for you. Amen. Amen. I didn't get many amens. Amen. That's better. That's better. But you see, when people are hurting, they don't need our difficulties dumped on them. Amen. Now back to the message. That was an interruption. Okay, it doesn't talk to anything at all. And if you didn't like it, that's okay. Just pray for me anyway. But see, that irritates me. That ir See, when I make a hospital call, I'm there five minutes and I have prayer with them and then I'm gone. And we need to be kinder to one another when other people are having difficulties. Now when you have a broken spirit, you don't, you don't want somebody on your case. You don't want them. Amen? Amen? You want them to be understanding to you. You want them to be compassionate to you. You want them to be redemptive to you, toward you. And to say, I may not understand what you've gone through, but at least I care. And you know, folks, I find that I can use those two words and people accept them. I care. Amen. I care. Now just think about that. That doesn't mean I know what you're going through. That doesn't mean I'm trying to know what you're going through. But at least I care. Now, back to Jesus. Jesus stood and he said, this is my ministry. Now, I want to reread this. You don't have to look at your Bible. Just trust me, okay? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. There it is, right in his word. To preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised. So one of the ministries that Jesus has among us is when I have a broken heart or a broken spirit, he wants to heal it. That's right. You say, how does he do it? Well, if I knew how he did it, I'd be Jesus, and I'm not Jesus. So I don't know how he does it. I just know this, he does it. Amen. He does it. I can stand and give a testimony before you today as a minister of the gospel it, that I have had a broken spirit. I have had. You say, do you have now? No, it's been healed. 
You say, how does he do it? I, I don't know. But I have to admit that my spirit is broken before the healer can heal my broken spirit or broken heart. That's right. Now we're getting to where the, it, it's really good. You see, as long as I pretend and play act to you that everything is all right, Jesus can't help me. No, he can't. He can't help me. It's only when I say, dear Lord Jesus, I don't know what happened. I don't know why this happened. My, my spirit is broken. Will you please heal my broken spirit? Are you with me? And guess what? He does something that I can't do. He does something that the doctors can't do. He does something that my wife can't do. He does something that the church can't do. He heals my broken spirit. Amen. Now I'm almost done with the message. Almost done. You say you just started, yeah. Well, I'm not a long-winded preacher. If you're here today, you don't need to tell anybody. Now, we're, in just a moment, I'm going to have the congregation. We're all going to stand. And this is going to be the conclusion of the message. I'm going to lead us in the prayer. This is the way we're going to pray. And all of us are going to pray it, unless you don't want to pray. If you don't want to pray, that's okay. We're going to pray, Dear Lord Jesus, I confess my sins. And we're going to go ahead and from that way. And then we're going to, we're going to say, see, everybody's going to pray for themselves. I'm not praying for you. I'm praying for me. So the thing, I'm trying to protect the person here who may have a broken spirit. It's none of anybody else's business. Amen? Amen. 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 Now you better watch out. If you try to find out what's going on, you're going to have to fuss with me. <laughs> and that's not going to be very good for you. Because I'm going to say Jesus on you. See, Je Je Jesus isn't interested in gossips. Jesus isn't interested in stuff that tear people down. Jesus is interested in bringing us together, making us redemptive, making us compassionate toward one another, understanding even though we don't realize what's going on, we want to be caring people. Amen? Amen. So when we stand, we're all going to pray for ourselves. And I'm not going to know. Now listen very carefully. I'm not going to know. If there's a person here today, and I don't know why the Lord laid this message on my heart, that's, that's his business. All my business is to do what he bids me to do. Amen? Amen. Amen. And that's what I'm doing. So as we stand and we pray, we'll close our eyes, and every one of us will pray out loud what I pray first. Now let's practice. Dear Lord Jesus, Dear Lord Jesus. Jesus. I got half of you. <laughs> now let's try it again. I want all of you. Dear Lord Jesus. No, no, no. Don't rush me. Don't rush me. Don't pray ahead of me. Pray after me. My. Dear Lord Jesus. Dear Lord Jesus. That's it. We've got it. You say, what else? Trust me. Whatever I pray, you pray that out loud. Now here's the wonderful thing. As there's anybody here today who has a broken spirit, only he knows. That's right. I'm not asking you to raise your hand. I'm not asking you to come forward. One more thing I'll ask you to do. When Pastor John comes back from his vacation, you say, when Pastor Paul was here, I prayed for the Lord to heal my broken spirit. You tell him, and he's your pastor, and he'll guide you if there's anything more to do. Now, isn't that okay? Yeah. I don't see what anybody would have any difficulty with that. All right? Now we're ready. Let's stand. We'll get ready to pray. Now see, we're coming to the healer of broken spirits. Isn't that beautiful? See, he wants us to come to him. Now my wife isn't even standing. She can't stand. And some others can't stand. That's okay. She's dead. She's standing in her heart. Now you're ready? See, we each pray for ourselves. I'm praying for me. I'm not praying for you as the congregation. I've already done that. You follow me. Let's pray. Bow our heads. Dear Lord Jesus, Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you, I come to you, confessing my sins, confessing my sins, asking thy forgiveness, asking thy forgiveness for all my sins, for all my sins. I believe, I believe that you are, that you are the healer, the healer of broken spirits, of broken spirits. I present myself, I present myself to you, to you, and I ask you, and I ask you to do, 
to do what I cannot do for myself. Please heal my broken spirit. I thank you. I thank you. I trust you. I trust you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Now we're going to conclude the service with communion. Isn't that neat? Isn't that neat? We conclude the service with communion. I have one question. Now, Pastor John has told me the two of you will assist me in this, but I see the unbroken loaf. Now, you guys evidently take care of breaking the loaf, is that right? Or does that from Pastor John does that? So that means I do that. Right? <laughs> That's why I'm asking. Okay, now the two people who were going, aren't you glad you were here today? Now this probably will not be exactly the way that Pastor John does it. But he trusts me. Okay? So if he trusts me, you trust me. All right? That's right. Now, I don't know how this congregation partakes of the Lord's Supper. Communion. Holy communion. All of those are biblical terms for the same thing. But see, we come. None of us are worthy, starting with me. I am not worthy. You say, why you partake of it? I do this in remembrance of him. I don't do this because I'm worthy. I don't do this because I want to be worthy. I do this because he said, do this in remembrance of me. Now what did he do? He healed our broken spirits, right? Amen. He set us free from our sins. He's our savior. He's everything that we stand in need of. Amen? Amen. So unless you are not a follower of Christ, Please, everyone, even the visitors who are among us, we're an open communion church. Please, as you know Christ in your heart as your Savior, please feel free to take the elements and hold them in your hands until all have been served. And then I will pray a prayer of blessing. Now, I don't know whether this is the way Pastor John does it, but stick with me. We'll get through together, okay? Amen. And, and we'll partake of the elements together after they have served you. Now, you understand what the loaf is, don't you? This represents Jesus' body that was broken for my sins and the sins of the whole world. You know what my heart says? Thank the Lord. Amen. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? Mm -hmm. Why did he do it? Because he loves us. Right. Because he loves us. So if you're a follower of Christ today, let the men serve you with the bread and with the juice. Hold them until all have been served, and then we'll all partake together. And Charlie, will you go ahead and play as they wait on the congregation, please?
this, neither are you. But he makes us worthy. As followers of his, he said, this bread represents his shed in his broken body, broken there on Calvary, for the remission, that means forgiveness, for the remission of my sins and your sins and the sins of the whole world.